Hi everyone, my name is Ike Rakeski and I'm a librarian in information services here at Mesa County Libraries. And what I'm gonna be talking about today is a brief history of mining in Mesa County, Colorado. It won't strictly be limited to Mesa County. We're gonna be looking at a little bit of the mining history on the west end of Montrose County. The reason I wanted to include Montrose County is that there was a lot of a lot of uranium mining that took place in both Mesa County and in the nearby section of Montrose County. Um, so the title might be a little bit misleading, but um, Mesa County and Montrose County are pretty close to each other. The map that you see is essentially covering the area that we're going to be talking about. We're looking at the area to the north of Grand Junction and Fruta, also including Palisade and then going down past just south of Paradox Valley. So you'll see Gateway, Bedrock, Nucla, and Norwood. So in the region, coal mining and uranium mining were the two main forms of mineral extraction, and copper was also mined. Gold mining also took, took place to a limited extent. The Book Cliffs coal field was the primary location of the coal mining, and most of the uranium mining in Mesa County took place in the northern portion of the Eurovan Mining District. What I'm gonna do now is just go over a brief timeline of mining activities in both Mesa County and Montrose County. So in 1853, the Gunnison Party discovered coal near West Salt Creek. And in 1879, the town of Paradox is established. In 1881, a gentleman named Tom Talbert describes or discovers what is described as a weird ore near Rock Creek in Montrose County. And also in 1881, the town of Natarita is established. In 1892, there's an unsuccessful attempt to coke coal from the Book Cliff Mine, just north of Grand Junction. And in 1895, the Cameo and Palisade Mines begin operation. In 1896, near Paradox Valley, the Cashin Copper Mine deposit is discovered. In 1911, Carnotite Ore is discovered on both Calamity Mesa and, in, and on Outlaw Mesa. And we'll talk more about Carnotite here in a bit. Um, the, the relation of carnotite to the mining is that carnotite was how they were able to get radium, uranium, and vanadium. In 1913, the National Radium Institute is founded and a camp is established on Long Park. From 1914 to 1923, radium mining takes place in the southwestern part of Mesa County. In 1915, the Standard Chemical Company establishes the Joe Jr. Mill at the future site of Eurovan. And in 1943, the United States Vanadium Corporation builds a vanadium plant south of Grand Junction. 1946, the vanadium era essentially ends. And in 1948, the Atomic Energy Commission initiates the domestic procurement program of uranium ore. In 1962, the Atomic Energy Commission mineral leases expire. And in 1966, the Atomic Energy Commission stops buying uranium concentrates. In 1970, the Climax Uranium Mill in Grand Junction ceases operation. And in 1971, San Miguel County exceeds Montrose County in uranium and vanadium production. The map that we're looking at now is a map of the Book Cliffs coal field, just north of Grand Junction, but it actually extends all the way to the area north of Fruta, as well as Palisade. And you can see, you can see there are some colors representing the different geological formations on that map. 
So in 1908, there were between 18 to 22 mines and a handful of prospects in that area, north of Grand Junction Fruit and near Palisade. It's a little hard to make out, but you can see those icons representing those mines on that map. By the 1930s, however, coal mining in Mesa County had become less profitable and operations slowed considerably. I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this, looking at the book cliffs from Palisade. Just wanted to include this as sort of a visual of that area. So this next image is showing us the book cliffs. Once again, you're looking at Mount Lincoln. This is taken a little, little bit um, closer towards Grand Mesa. You're gonna see over on the right side the area where Cameo was located. Um, and a lot of those Palisade and Cameo mines are also in that area. These are two other images of the Ballard, Ballard's mine near Thompson, Utah. The image on the left shows you the workings of the mine and the image on the right shows you just the different layers where you're gonna see the sandstone and then the coal below that. You can see that there's quite a, quite a large layer of coal. So what we're looking at in this next image is the town of Carpenter. And Carpenter was a town um, for the employees of both the Book Cliff Mine and the Grand Valley Mine. And Carpenter was located just um, just north of Grand Junction up there by the base of the book cliffs. These next two images are just a little bit of a, a brief description of the book cliff mine. Um, the book cliff mine, which is operated by the book cliff coal company is situated in a small ravine in the little book cliffs about 12 miles north of Grand Junction. The mine is connected with the Denver and Rio Grande railroad by a narrow gauge railroad and camp in the camp consists of a number of frame houses, a company store, workshop, and etc. Good water is supplied in moderate quantity from a nearby spring, which is an important factor in determining the location of the mine. You can even see a, an ad for the Book Cliff Coal Company in the 1909 Grand Junction High School yearbook. It shows you that the coal mining here in Grand Junction and in Mesa County was a you know, quite influential and important industry. So what we've got next is a Daily Sentinel article from December 10th, 1897. And essentially the article is describing competition in the Grand Valley between the different coal mining companies. There was a lot of you know, the, the different companies were connected by their competition. Um, and in a lot of ways that drove and affected prices of the coal. So in the Leadville Herald Democrat on December 21st, 1919, we see another article with the headline being Bookcliff miners ask for more pay. So that was another issue that you would see come up periodically is the miners working in those mines asking their employers for additional pay. And then that affects businesses. And then, you know, you know, it affects a lot of different issues. So also in the Leadville Herald Democrat on March 21st, 1921, you see an article, with the headline, coal mines closed near Grand Junction. You can see that sort of is leading towards the slowdown of coal mining. We've got an image here of the Book Cliff Mine. And once again, the Book Cliff Mine was one of those mines that were, that were mined near Carpenter. And in a lot of ways, I would say the Book Cliff Mine is probably, probably one of the more well-known coal mines in Mesa County. You can see a couple other images of nearby coal mines. In a lot of cases, they've been walled off for safety reasons. It's so another image leading up to a coal mine. You can see the, the trail. 
few other images and just some equipment that you might see around those coal mines. Some foundations of buildings that were located near coal mines. And in some cases you'll actually see coal on the ground even to this day near where those operations took place. We're now gonna be talking about copper mining. And copper was produced primarily in three areas of Mesa County. Those areas included Uniweep Canyon, Sinbad Valley, and the Gateway area. There was also a large mining operation south of Paradox Valley called the Cashin Mine, and that was in Montrose County. The Cashin Mine also produced small amounts of silver and gold. Most of the copper mining took place in the 19, early 1900s, but there was some limited production in the 1940s as well. Copper ore is geologically located in a similar layer in both Uniweep Canyon and near LaSalle Creek, which was where the cash-in mine was. The hanging flume, which I'm sure a lot of you have viewed or seen from the road or are familiar with, um, was constructed in 1889 and 1890 to provide water to the Lone Tree Placer Mine. The structure was completely abandoned in approximately 1900, and a lot of the wood from the hanging flume was actually used for structures in the area, so it was repurposed. Got a couple other photos of the Last Chance Mine, which is up above Uniweep Canyon. So now we're gonna be moving further down the road or further down the future, and we're gonna be talking about radium, vanadium, and uranium mining. Um, I would say, you know, coal mining was definitely important and copper mining was also important, but in Mesa County and in Montrose County, uranium mining and those other related ores was, was very important. I would say that in a lot of ways, Mesa County and surrounding counties wouldn't have developed the same as they had, as they did without these forms of mining. Radium was actually discovered in 1895 near Rock Creek in Montrose County. The radium boom took place between 1910 and 1923. Although carnitite was discovered in 1911 on Calamity and Outlaw Mesas, organized mining did not start until 1914. Eventually, the discovery of rich deposits of radium in the Belgian Congo led to a shutdown of the radium mining in Western Colorado in 1923. Got an image of carnitite ore. In the early 1940s, vanadium, which is once again a product of carnitite ore, began to be mined in the Gateway and Paradox Valley areas. And by 1943, there were 11 vanadium mines on Calamity and Beaver Mesa. Vanadium concentration plants were then located south of Grand Junction and in Gateway. And by 1944, the Calamity Mesa area was the top producer of vanadium in Mesa County. And from 1914 to 1944, the Calamity Group produced 10,000 tons of vanadium ore. From 1945 to 1948, most of the mines were not in operation. This changed when the Atomic Energy Commission announced its domestic procurement program on April 11th, 1948. So in a lot of ways, that program initiated, or at least was a strong factor in the uranium boom of Western Colorado in the 1950s. That plan included a number of incentives for uranium producers. The Atomic Energy Commission promised a $10,000 bonus for the delivery of 20 tons of uranium bearing ore. 
The program also guaranteed a minimum price for 10 years for high-grade ore. And you can see that those guarantees and those incentives would really make it, um, there would be a lot of need, or at least there would be the, the opportunity for those mining companies. You know, if you can figure, okay, the Atomic Energy Commission is guaranteeing these prices, makes a lot of sense to start your mining business or to at least stay in business. In 1951, the Climax Uranium Company began mining and milling ore. The company eventually took over the building that had previously housed the Holly Sugar Beet Factory in Grand Junction. And that actually, that building still stands down there by the Colorado River. The Climax Mill's original capacity was 330 tons of ore per day, but in 1955, the capacity was expanded to 500 tons per day. Uranium and vanadium production reached its highest point between 1955 and 1957, and in 1957 there were well over 100 active operations. From 1949 to 1970, Montrose County was the top producer of uranium in Colorado. In 1958, there were 215 mines in Montrose County alone. Production peaked in 1962. Uranium totals were valued at 19.6 million and vanadium was valued at 4.7 million in Montrose County. In total, there were close to 800 uranium and vanadium mines in Montrose County. The uranium boom began to slow after the Atomic Energy Commission announced that the United States no longer needed as much ore. This led to an end of that domestic procurement program. From the 1960s to the early 1970s, uranium and vanadium mining began a steady decline in production in Western Colorado. Some mining did take place in the 1970s, but it wasn't nearly at that same level as it had during the, as it had during the 1950s. You'll see pretty early on in this, this timeline, a, an article from the Montrose Daily Press on February 1st, 1915. You can see the headline is that the Paradox Radium Mines produce 90% of the world's supply. So, that area of Paradox Valley was quite important as far as radium mining goes. So the next article was in the Salida Mail newspaper on October 6th, 1916. And once again, you can see the headline is indicating the amount of activity going on as far as those radium mines in Paradox Valley. The headline reads, as you can see, 250 miners needed in radium mines in Paradox Valley. In the Aspen Times on February 17th, 1955, we can once again see that there was an article talking about uranium mining. U Power cooks food and it defends. In the Eagle Valley Enterprise newspaper on February 17th, 1955, we see an article headlined, Eurovan takes U boom in stride and growth is rapid. So, and this is right during the middle of that uranium boom. In that same newspaper on February 17th, 1955 as well, there was another article talking about that Climax mining company here in Grand Junction. You can see that the headline reads, Climax Uranium here to stay to grow with Grand Junction. And from that same day, February 17th, 1955, in the Aspen Times, we've got an image of a uranium mining operation. So 1964, things were starting to slow down. That uranium procurement program initiated by the Atomic Energy Commission has ended. And you can still see that those mining companies are wanting to see mining continue, but there just isn't as much of a demand. And we can see an article indicating that in the School of Mines or Digger um, on April 21st, 1964. 
And you would see even in the 1970s articles about you know, companies trying to reinitiate or at least start that uranium mining back up. Steamboat pilot on January 6, 1977 is talking about the U Utah uranium industry actually. So this next map is showing us the area, part of Paradox Valley, and then also along where Highway 141 runs. And this is actually showing us the Yerevan Uranium District. You can see that each one of those circles with the number are indicating a uranium mine. So you can see that there was definitely sort of a density or a cluster of those mines in that area, which is, you know, in reality, not that large of an area. The next map, which is sort of a larger scale, is showing us those uranium deposits throughout Western Colorado in that, and in that section of Eastern Utah. This next image is of one of those mining operations on Outlaw Mesa, and that would be the Climax Camp, which actually near the Climax Camp, there were a number of uranium mines. This is an image, if you're driving along Highway 141 between Gateway and Natarita, you'll see a number of abandoned uranium mines. And this being one of them, which is just outside of Yerevan. This is another image looking from Calamity Camp, which was a very well-known uranium mining operation just outside of the Uncompahgre National Forest on Calamity Mesa. And this image is actually looking across towards the New Verde camp, which was also another mining camp. A few other images of the New Verde camp. See some remaining structures. This next image is of a, a tunnel that was dug into the sandstone and it actually contained mining supplies. And this tunnel is, is very near where Yerevan was located. This next image is of a uranium mine near Calamity Camp. You also find some sort of interesting little side notes and I wanted to just include those. This image is of a dinosaur track which was found in the Liberty Bell coal mine. And I can't personally vouch for this because I haven't been into that many uranium mines, but I've heard and read that it's not uncommon to see dinosaur tracks in those uranium mines. You know, you'll actually see, you're, you're seeing those sand deposits, those sandstone deposits layer by layer. We also have a, a map from 1915 from the United States Geological Survey of the Paradox Valley area indicating all those blue stars as being uranium mining or actually radium mining camps. The mining had a, a number of impacts in everyday life. What we're looking at here is the school census record from Montrose County Courthouse. And it's from 1919 to 1959. But you can see that the school attendance or the, those students registered in schools definitely had some peaks and valleys. And in a lot of that, a lot of ways those were tied in to the speeding up and the slowing down of the mining operations. We also have a couple other images, historical images I wanted to include. We've got a map of Grand Junction or a section of that map from 1962. And you can see that we have got that nuclear symbol on that map. And there's also on the right side, a picture or two pictures from a promotional map for Grand Junction in 1955. The one picture at the top is showing us those orchards out in Palisade. And the picture at the bottom is of that Climax Mill. Okay, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.